the Sidewinder. Ideally, the potential plus the kinetic energy at a point on a ride would equal the potential plus the kinetic energy at every other point on the ride. But roller coasters aren't ideal. How does the kinetic energy at the bottom of the first hill of the Sidewinder compare to the potential energy at the top of the starting hill? Is a rider moving at critical speed in the first loop? Or how many Gs are you experiencing in the loop? You will answer both of these questions on the ride. You need a stopwatch and a vertical accelerometer. Stand off to the side of the ride where you can see the first hill. Wait for the train to begin moving. Pick a point at the bottom of the first hill just where the track begins to level off. When the train is released, start timing as soon as the front of the car reaches that point. Stop timing as soon as the back of the train reaches that point. Repeat this measurement at least five times and take the average of your measurements. Now, wait in line and finish the calculations. Velocity is displacement divided by time, and kinetic energy is one-half times mass times velocity squared. You will need to use the vertical accelerometer on the ride. Make a prediction of how many Gs you are experiencing at the top of the loop. Hint, if you were designing a roller coaster, would you want it to be at critical speed at the top of the loop? What if there was extra friction on the track, or it was a very windy day? This lab is easier with two people on the ride. One person should hold the accelerometer and focus on it. The other person should yell now when you are at the top of one of the loops. The person holding the accelerometer should remember the reading until the end of the ride. The graph that you have to make for this lab is of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is based on speed, which is a difficult graph, but potential energy is easy to graph. How should the potential and kinetic energy graphs be related? 